News of a new crime wave broke this week. A criminal organization admitted that it committed over 5,600 crimes in a year. Violent crimes, drug manufacturing and trafficking, and political corruption. That criminal organization, the FBI. In a story reported by USA Today, licensed criminals, FBI informants authorized to break the law 5,600 times in one year. They reported in at least 5,658 cases in a single year alone, the FBI authorized its informants to commit crimes varying from selling drugs to plotting robberies, according to a copy of the FBI report obtained by USA Today. After much redacting by the authorities, the watered-down FBI's 2011 report obtained under the Freedom of Information Act has revealed that agents had been authorizing 15 crimes a day on average in order to get the necessary information from their informants. The document does not indicate the severity of the crimes authorized by the agency, nor does it include material about violations that were committed without the government's permission. It just cites a number of 5,658 Tier 1 and Tier 2 infractions committed by criminals to help the Bureau battle crime. This is what the FBI says without any sense of irony, what would otherwise be illegal activities. And of course, the ATF and the DEA admit to doing the same thing, but they say they have no idea how many incidents happened. What are Tier 1 crimes? According to the Department of Justice, misdemeanors or felonies under federal, state, or local law if, quote, engaged in by a person acting without authorization, unquote, including acts of violence, corrupt conduct by senior federal, state, or local public officials, or the manufacturing, importing, exporting, possession, or trafficking in controlled substances of certain quantities. A convicted pimp, extortionist, car thief, and all-around thug. But an ABC News investigation found that Manny Shapayev is not in prison for life, but living a life of luxury and fast cars in Florida, thanks to his work as a government witness and FBI informant. An allegation that Shapayev's FBI agent handler not only tried to interfere in the murder investigation, but took lavish gifts and cash. The FBI supervisor over this says, it sounds like a lot, but you have to keep that in context. So what is the context? As far as drug trafficking, we know that poppy production in Afghanistan for three years in a row has broken previous record productions. Afghanistan, under U.S. occupation, has gone from providing 10 percent of the world's supply to 90 percent. Put another way, since U.S. occupation, drug production is 40 times higher, and that translates to 1 million additional deaths. We have these opium fields, and we are tolerating it. We are tolerating the cultivation of the opium. The dilemma it is with the opium trade. And they make so much money off the opium. And just yesterday, news broke that the U.S. Air Force transported 24 tons of cocaine from Costa Rica to Miami with a stop along the way in Nicaragua, just like when Reagan was funding the Contras with cocaine. So much for the war on drugs, which is actually a war of drugs, a war conducted by the federal government against the American people and against our rights where they manufacture and ship in vast quantities of drugs and then use that as a pretext to take away our God-given, constitutionally recognized rights. But what about the war on terror? Can the federal government take credit for saving us from a plot of its own creation? It will tell you that it, the FBI, has foiled about 17 plots to kill Americans during the past 10 years. What it will not tell you is that there have been 20 foiled plots, and of them, three were interrupted by members of the public. Now, the 17 terrorist events he just mentioned don't include false flag attacks where people were actually killed. They're not going to admit to those. But what about the war on terror? Is it really a war of terror? Here's how the dictionary defines terrorism. The use of violence and intimidation in the pursuit of political aims. Well, if these 17 terrorist events were created by the FBI in order to achieve political means, then by definition, the FBI and the U.S. government are terrorist organizations. This news article shows the mindset of the FBI, that the law is whatever they say it is. They're not constrained by real law, certainly not by the Constitution. And this is the mindset of every federal agency, whether it's the IRS, the EPA, the NSA, all of them. And it's the mindset of the police who believe they can do anything to anyone with the slightest provocation. They tased a young, naked 11-year-old autistic girl, they tase an 18-year-old to death for the crime of graffiti in Miami, the same city where the government just delivered 24 tons of cocaine. In Durham, North Carolina, a cop recently assaulted a motorist and threatened to plant cocaine on him. 
An honor student in Illinois had her teeth knocked out by the cops in a restaurant, and a 95-year-old man was shot to death by cops when he waved his cane in a manner they thought was threatening. These are just a few of the police brutality cases that have come to light in just the last few days. These are things, as the FBI would say, that would otherwise be crimes, except that our criminal government knows now that it can do whatever it wishes without ever being held accountable. America, have you had enough of the war of drugs, the war of terrorism, and of police acting as criminals because they have uniforms? For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. Inform yourself and reach out to others with a print version of InfoWars magazine. Available as an annual subscription or in discounted multipacks at InfoWarsStore.com.